Hi, good morning. We are here at St. Thomas Aquinas College today in Spark Hill, New York, and we are talking about the therapeutic recreation program here that has been in existence for the past 15 years. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas College is just in 2011 going to offer the therapeutic recreation program as a major for people interested in going out and working with all different populations. Uh, First, I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of what therapeutic recreation is. Therapeutic recreation is the treatment, rehabilitation, and or habilitation of individuals who might be found in uh, long-term settings, rehabilitation centers, community day centers, as well as those people suffering from addictions. Uh, students here at St. Thomas Aquinas College learn how to plan, assess, provide and evaluate programs in therapeutic recreation. I have also authored the TAP method, which stands for Therapeutic Thematic Arts Programming. The TAP method has now been well accepted in the American Therapeutic Recreation Association, as well as the American Art Therapy Association for its process in utilizing therapeutic modalities in a structured nine-step method. So our students here who are going to be speaking this morning have actually utilized the TAP method with specific uh, populations. One of the students is a fourth-year student who is in his internship and going to be sharing with you how the TAP method is used with children who have emotional and social problems. And the second student you're going to hear from is how she looked at the TAP method from her own personal perspective. What makes the TAP method unusual is that it starts out, first of all, identifying how all the creative arts, painting, drawing, sculpture, affect the different brain regions in our bodies. The second thing that's innovative about the TAP method is that it starts with meditation and the person gets an image of themselves or an image of the past and then that image is brought out into a nine-step program. There has to date been 11 studies on the TAP method and they have had significant positive outcomes such as increased time and frequency in programming. The TAP method has been found to increase cognition in those well elderly, those with Alzheimer's disease, as well as those with severe dementia. The TAP method has also been found internationally in Finland to help, help staff morale and increase staff participation with patients. So we are going to now uh, introduce uh, Joe Palmacci, who is going to be our first student who speaks about the TAP method in his internship. How you doing? I'm Joe Palmaccio. Um, I'm a fourth year student, currently doing my internship at the Children's Village in Dobbsbury, New York. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Go. Well, um, let me get started about uh, my therapeutic thematics arts programming at the Children's Village. Um, the Children's Village is a residential school for at-risk boys aged 6 to 20 in an enriched and structured program aimed at preparing them to be successful members of their families and communities. It focuses on teaching pro-social behavior and fosters a love of learning, the acquisition of career-oriented job skills, and the development of leisure interests and skills that will foster lifelong emotional and physical health and well-being. The population they usually deal with is kids that are with behavioral issues, family problems, alien children, and children sent there from court order. Um, for, for some examples, the alien children are children that got picked up with no green card and are there for, to be placed to, to, into the right environment like some kids come from Mexico. Um, Others that are court ordered are there for crimes, and some some children are very uh, you know violent. But we we do the best that we can to help them and to redirect them in the right direction. Um, now the tap method with the boys on my next slide. Okay, let's just pause for a minute because you have to tell her to get on cam. No, we're not going to pause. Right. Just get the camera. There we go. We're back to camera. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, so we, we want you to be on camera as you're speaking. So okay. why don't we go to, which is, uh, why don't you just summarize the next slide? Well, the next slide is where I perform the TAP method. It's about what, what I did with the kids, with the 14 cottages that they have at Dobbs Ferry at the Children's Village. Um, each cottage, the kids are contained in certain different areas. Some, the cottage I dealt with doing the TAP method was drug and alcohol abuse kids. And basically, I took them through all the steps. I performed the TAP method with the boys that were all in the same cottage. The cottage consisted of the drug and alcohol. I took the boys every session through a meditation and body relaxation with all positive results to, re to relax their body and mind. Once their minds and bodies were relaxed, I took them into a guided imagery where they were remembering positive memories and images that they once had. Then we take these images and memories and turn them into artwork where they get time to relax and create something that is theirs while enjoying themselves. Now, could you tell us a little bit about how the response was for these young boys? Well, the response was actually great at first. The kids loved sitting down to relax. It's time for them to get out of their cottages because they're cooped up in there all day. It, it's basically just a program that, that they never done before, and it was really, it was really something else. And, um, and then on to my next slide, talking about the goals that I had for using the TAP method, it targeted the, the four domains, social, emotional, physical, and cognitive. The social was the boys will get to socialize in a calm place, relaxing, in a calm, relaxing place, and talk about what they have created. Emotional, the boys will express feelings through memories and their artwork. Physical, I will perform a body relaxation for the boys, and they will have physical movement through dance, because that dance is, is one of our steps, which we will later talk about. Cognitive, the boys will have their minds relaxed and in a calm place through a meditation and a guided imagery. And basically, now, now let's. What did you actually hear from the boys about what they saw through their meditation? I heard a lot of positive stuff, like from family members. They talked about brothers, sisters, their parents, grandmas, grandpas, all positive stuff. Holidays, um, vacations, and it was all stuff. They even talked about their girlfriends too, because we are dealing with teenage boys, mm -hmm. and you know. Yeah. That's, it's, it was real life in there, whether, whether you see it or not, you know, these kids grow up in, in the tough areas, Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and it's, it's pretty interesting to and, see their results. And did you see actually them physically become more relaxed after using the meditation as the first step? Certainly, certainly. At first, you know, a little fidgety, you know, because it's hard to keep them contained, but as I got going through it, and every session they got better and better and better, so it was it was really good. Okay, great. And now to the nine steps of the TAP method. The nine steps of the TAP method, one, meditation and conversation, two, music, which the first two steps I performed every session before I went into art. So then, then the third step was drawing and painting, fourth is sculpture, five is dance and movement, Six is words, poetry, or story, words on paper. Uh, seven, food. Eight, theme event. Nine, phototherapy. And the nine steps basically summarize what I do in an, in an orderly fashion for structure in the programming. And um, now we can get going on what the first step I performed, the first art activity, which was drawing. Drawing. Um, the first step was drawing using colored pencils, crayons, and markers. The, children's were, the children were drawing picture, pictures stimulating positive memories like vacations, families, and even their friends and girlfriends. Um, the one kid in the middle of the picture, was, uh, he was a real artist, the one kid. He grew up in Brooklyn. He had uh, a very tough atmosphere. He had some family problems. He got picked up for, for uh, marijuana use. But he really showed really creativeness in his artwork, and and he, he drew a picture of his girlfriend because that's what stimulated him most and made him happy. So I said, go with it, and that's what basically happened. 
And in fact, doesn't that give them a real feeling of self-esteem, that they can bring something positive into their day when these are children who are, who are fueled with so much negativity and so much self-doubt? Of course, of yeah. course, most definitely. Um, now to the next step, I did painting. This step, I had a little bit of a problem with the boys. Um, the second step is painting, where the kids would paint images they saw in their guided imagery. Since I am dealing with children that have some <coughs> behavioral problems, they painted some inappropriate things. For example, gang-related stuff, which there is a zero tolerance for anything gang-oriented at the Children's Village. Most of these children don't have a lot of positive memories due to the environment they grew up in. So basically, I kind of did not want to put any of the pictures up. I had to destroy them and get rid of them because I was not trying to promote gang-oriented stuff. But this was the only session where I had a minor problem. And you know, youth, it's, it's tough to deal with youth. If you can get through to one kid a day, it's always a positive. So if they can just grasp one little thing every day, that, that's all I'm asking too. But on to the next step, mask making. This was a big, this was a big uh, plus. We had a lot of fun with this. It was around <laughs> Halloween. It was a great idea to have children paint their own mask, symbolizing who they are. Um, they really enjoyed this step. We had a lot of fun talking about past Halloweens they had. And looking at the pictures, the kids I had a really had a good time. They showed a lot of creativity. They showed emotions from painting the fronts, the backs of it. And they actually wore them around on the campus during Halloween. And because they're not allowed to wear costumes, the older kids, the younger kids are, the ages like six to 10, they're allowed to wear costumes. But the older kids in that cottage were not allowed to uh, wear costumes. So they were wearing their masks that they were created. They were allowed to do it. It was something fun for them and they got to show them off around campus. It was very exciting. And let me ask you, how did the staff respond to that, that they actually had these beautiful masks that they had made themselves and were able to wear? Did the staff interact with that? The staff actually really did, especially the, the art, uh, the art um, major. The, she does all the art therapy there. She was like, wow, she was like, that was very impressive that you, uh, that you took these boys to do mask making because I did it once before, it was a success. And she says now that she's going to keep doing it more and more with her kids in her cottages. Right. So it was a big success. Now to sculpture on my next slide. Um, this next step, I had the boys make a sculpture of whatever they wanted. It had to be appropriate. This was excellent because the children got to create a sculpture, then paint it. They made a funny face, their favorite number, and a cross. And talking a little bit about the kids, um, the one kid is a real artist who made that funny face. He, he take every art thing I gave him, he took and he ran with it. And he, he did a phenomenal job. Um, the one kid who drew the cross, he's, he's a little bit religious. He's one of my Mexican children. Um, and he, he did a phenomenal job. And the other kid, he, he was a little bit of the gang oriented. He drew his, he put his favorite number. And so it was, it, was a, it was a positive. We all had fun. We talk about good things in life, positive things, redirection. So that step was uh, a big plus. And when they finished the sculpture, did they actually share their um, interests? For instance, you were saying that the, the child who was uh, religious, did he share with the other people his aspect of being religious and how important that was to him? Y yes, very little because the other kids aren't that religious, so we don't talk too much about mm -hmm. it. So it was more of like a guideline where he said, I want, I want to do a cross, I'm going to hang it up in my room, because they're not, they're not allowed to have like real like posters on their wall, but the artwork that they create, they're allowed to hang up and, mm. and show it to the other kids. So that was a real positive. OK, good, great. Yep. And then on to the next slide, was col uh, collage and phototherapy. In the fifth session, I had the boys make a collage. I brought in a bunch of magazines which they cut out, and things they liked, and just put them all together to make a collage with different colors of paper added to create something real nice. Um, they are teenage boys, so they, are, they were looking at all photos of women, but I directed them to add some other things that they are interested in. Like the one boy was interested in joining the military. So as you saw in the one picture on the side, he had a cutout of a, of a Marine. Um, they put a couple pictures of cars and cologne. 
They, they, and they just, it was something that they could create that they liked, that, they was, that really interested them. And that was, that was a positive real step. And during that step, did you see that there was a, a flow that we talk about in the classroom where they get into it and it quiets down and they, they really get focused and everything else seems to drift away? Did you see that happen? Yes, especially you know because I'm taking them through the meditation and body relaxation. So that just puts them in the zone of a relaxed state where instead of running around their cottages, cursing each other out all day, mm. they got to come in here, relax, calm music, played a little meditation music, the body relaxation really stimulates positive reactions and, mm. and body motion and body movement. Mm. And they just were in the zone and going with it. And you know, the girls, you know, of course they are teenage boys, so you are gonna get that. Yeah, yeah, okay. But yeah. Um, now onto my next step, dance and movement. When I first told the boys what this session was, their reaction was, I don't dance, I break dance and rap. So, so I told them, so that's what you do, then do it. I brought in some music that they like, but the appropriate versions, just, they just got to dance and move around a little while singing or rapping. So my boys are basically, you know, I told you as from the New York and Bronx area and they love Jay-Z, Tupac, Lil Wayne's their favorite. So they were playing a lot of Little Wayne. So they must have really enjoyed this. Yeah, yeah. They were they were dancing around. The one kid he had some some good moves. The others were just you know really standing there. But we were up and not you know sitting down all the time. So it get, it got them to get up and move around a little. And it, it was really it was really fun. We had a good time. A lot of laughs. Good. A lot of laughs. Good. Um, but that that was prob that was probably one of the most fun sessions we had. And do you think that it really doing the structured se sessions? Uh, enables you to make a more stronger relationship with the boys because you're coming in very planned, very orient oriented, oriented to what you're actually going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So you come in with knowing what is going to take place. Does that help you? Most definitely it helps me. Um, when they come in, I have them in other programs, like I do roller hockey with the boys, I do baseball with them. When they come in, they show me the utmost respect and it really, it's, they, they, see, they see me as a friend, but we're really there to build relationships. We're not there to be their friend. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's very positive stuff and they, they, they are learning, they don't, there's, the cursing and all that stuff has definitely decreased mm -hmm. since, the, since a couple of sessions in and we have a real good time with it. So, okay. but now to my next step was the words to paper, uh, music to words on paper, I should say. Um, during this session, the boys in, listened to music that they liked and, and were allowed to write their own raps on poetry or even just words on paper. The boys really liked this. They wrote some lyrics they heard in, in songs that reminded them of themselves. They wanted to add art into their into their work, so I let them draw as well while incorporating words into their art. And as you saw from the pictures, some kids drew some drew that rapper, and he put all the words in there. It was a song. It was lyrics from his one of his favorite songs. I'm, I'm guessing. I think it was Little Wayne. Um, but uh, the other kids drew like their their favorite words. Like the one kid put his nickname and put like calm, peaceful. He wrote actual words like that, calm and peaceful, like symbolizing who he was. Which is such a powerful, yes. dynamical change for these kids. That's phenomenal. I know. That